friends today we are going to discuss an important challenge that is faced by many of the developing nations and countries of the third world that is poverty the learners will be able to understand the concept of poverty poverty estimates in india causes of poverty poverty alleviation programs and policies that has been taken up by the government as an initiative to alleviate poverty poverty is a challenge not only for india but for the whole world it is an outcome of multiple deprivation and lack of empowerment poverty can be viewed as social phenomenon in which a section of society is deprived of minimum level of living in other words a person who is unable to fulfill minimum level of living can be termed as poor the minimum level varies from society to society nation to nation and changes over time as well usually the minimum level of living includes food clothing housing education health and other facilities the denial of minimum level of living causes personal social economic loss to the society there is a loss of health and efficiency which results in low earning it is also said that poverty multiplies itself and becomes a vicious circle now let's see how the poverty is measured in india niti aayog erstwhile planning commission is the nodal agency in india for estimation of poverty it estimates the incidence of poverty at the national and state levels in the rural and urban area the incidence of poverty is measured by poverty rate which is the ratio of poor to the total population expressed as percentage it is also known as head count ratio that is hcr poverty ratio is measured through a poverty line in terms of per capita consumption expenditure over a month the expenditure data is obtained from nsso surveys let's see that erstwhile planning commission had constituted various task force expert groups from time to time to review the methodology of estimation of poverty it constituted a working group in 1962 to find a desirable minimum level of living for the population the working group recommended that the national minimum consumption expenditure popularly known as nmce for a household of 5 persons should not be less than rupees 100 per month and rupees 20 per capita per month in terms of 1960 61 prices for urban areas the figure was rupees 125 per month or rupees 25 per capita per month in view of higher prices in urban area it may be noted that the poverty line excluded the expenditure on education and health as they were assured to be provided by the government let's see the planning commission constituted a task force headed by dr lakdawala that was lakdawala committee which provided a quantitative measure of poverty by estimating the average calorie requirement for rural and urban areas the estimated calorie norm was 2400 k calorie per capita per day in rural area and 2100 k calorie per day in urban areas in terms of expenditure rupees 49.09 per capita per month was associated with a calorie intake of 2400 per capita in rural area and rupees 56.64 per capita per month with a calorie intake of 2100 per day in urban area the monthly per capita expenditure popularly known as mpce was termed as poverty line now let's see table 1 which shows the poverty ratio in percentage and absolute number of poor people in both rural and urban areas from the year 1973 to 74 to 2004 to 2005 there has been a decline in both absolute number as well as percentage it may be noted that urp or 
uniform reference recall period consumption in which the consumer expenditure data for all the items were collected from 30 day recall period. In view of some inadequacies pointed out by the experts, an expert group under the chairmanship of Dr. Suresh Tendulkar was constituted in 2005 to review and recommend a new poverty line. However, the expert group did not construct a new poverty line. It adopted the Lakadawala methodology of replaced URP that is uniform referral recall period by MRP that is known as mixed reference recall period. URP uses 30 day reference or recall period for all items of consumption that is food items and non food items. But the Tendulkar committee changed the reference period to past one year for five non food items. Let us see that clothing, footwear, durable goods, education and institutional medical expenses called mixed reference or recall period that is MRP. Let us see table 2 also. The Tendulkar committee estimated as shown in table 1.2 that the all India poverty line for 2004 and 5 for rural area was rupees 446.7 per capita per month and for urban areas rupees 578.8 per capita per month. On this basis, 41.8% of rural population and 25.7% of urban population was estimated to be below the poverty line in 2004 and 5. Now, let us see for the country as a whole, 37.2% of the people were below the poverty line in 2004 and 5. Now, let us see again in 2013 using the same methodology, the poverty line was revised at rupees 27.20 per capita per day for rural areas and rupees 33.33 per capita per day for urban areas. Now, this translates to rupees 816 per capita per month in rural area and rupees 1000 per capita per month in urban areas. On this basis, 21.9 percent of population was below poverty line. In 2011 and 12, 21.7 percent in urban areas. A new expert committee under the chairmanship of C. Rangarajan was set up again in 2012 and it submitted in report in 2014. They came up with a new estimation of poverty line. How it defined? It defined per capita monthly expenditure of rupees 972 in rural areas and rupees 1407 in urban areas as a basis of poverty line. It used monthly expenditure of household of 5 for defining the poverty line which was rupees 4860 in rural areas and rupees 7035 that is 7035 in urban areas. The expert group was of the view that the expenditure of household was more appropriate than that of the individuals. Rangarajan committee also took into consideration the average requirements of calories, proteins and fats based on the ICMR norms which are given below that is calorie requirement 2090 k calorie in urban areas and 2155 k calories in rural areas. Proteins 50 grams for urban area and 48 grams for rural areas. Fats 28 grams for urban area and 26 grams for rural areas. The latest exercise of poverty estimation is based on the socio-economic caste census that is SECC carried out in 2011. Let us see the data. This data has been used from 2015 onwards to identify poor families or the households. And this methodology uses seven indicators related to assets, income, literacy, possession of modern amenities like mobile phones, vehicle, refrigerators etc. to differentiate between the poor and non-poor. Now, based on this method, 
31.26 percent of population are considered to be poor. Now, let us also examine what are the causes of poverty. Several causes are listed below. Institutional and social factors, the causes of poverty line in the institutional and social factors that mark the life of the poor. The poor are deprived of the quality education and are unable to acquire the skills which fetch better incomes. Good health care facilities are also not available to the poor people. Then second point is rapid population growth among the poor. The growth rate of population went up from 1 percent in 1941 to 51 period to 2.1 percent in 1991 which is phenomenal. The population growth among poor people is high because of their illiteracy, traditional attitudes, lack of family planning practices, preference for the male child etcetera. With large sized families and low income, they are unable to meet even the basic minimum requirements or the needs of family members. The third point under this is poor implementation of land reforms. After independence, the government tried to implement land reforms and redistributed land to those who do not have any land. This move was successful only to a limited extent. Large section of agricultural workers were not able to farm the small holdings even as they did not have either money or skills to make the land productive and the land holdings were too small to be viable. Fourth is lack of alternative sources of employment. A large section of the rural poor are small farmers. The land they have is less fertile and it is dependent on monsoons. So, their survival depends on the subsistence crops and sometimes on livestock. With rapid growth of population and without the alternative source of employment, per capita availability of land for cultivation has steadily declined leading to fragmentation of land holdings. Another cause is indebtedness. Often there are reports of farmers committing suicides must have heard in the newspapers recently also due to their inability to pay back the loans taken by them for cultivation and other personal needs. Many a times their crops often fail due to drought or any other natural calamities causing acute stress and leading them to such extreme step. Lack of infrastructure is another reason. Economic and social infrastructure like energy, transport, power, education, health etc. serves as the foundation of growth and development. Lack of these infrastructures slows down the growth of the economy and efforts to address poverty. Other social factors include various social factors like caste system, joint family system, religious faith and beliefs, law of inheritance etc. often hinder the process of economic growth. For example, members of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes are not able to participate in the emerging employment opportunities in different sectors of urban and rural economy, so they do not possess necessary knowledge and skills. The most important is how the government has been formulating their policies and programs. Let us give our attention to that. Government has taken various policies and programs towards poverty alleviation. Government's approach to poverty reduction has taken three forms. The first is growth oriented approach. It is based on the expectation that the effect of economic growth, rapid increase in gross domestic product and per capita income would spread to the sections of society and will trickle down to the poor sections also in due course. This was the major focus of the planning in the 1950s and early 1960s. However, the population growth has resulted in a very low growth in per capita incomes. The gap between poor and the rich has actually widened. The green revolution exasperated the disparities regionally and between large and small farmers. There was unwillingness and inability to redistribute land 
So economists state that the benefits of economic growth have not trickled down to the poor. Looking for alternatives to specifically address the poor, policy makers felt that incomes and employment for the poor could be raised through the creation of additional assets and by means of work generation. This could be achieved through specific poverty alleviation programs. Now let us see the second approach. This second approach was initiated from third five year plan that was 19, during 1961 to 66 and progressively enlarged since then. One of the noted programs initiated in the 1970s was food for work, expanding self employment programs and wage employment programs are considered to be some of the major ways of addressing poverty. Now let us see some examples of such self employment programs, they were Rural Employment Generation Program REGP, Prime Minister's Rojgar Yojana PMRY and Swarna Jayanti Shahri Rozgar Yojana SJSRY. The first program aims at creating self employment opportunities in rural areas through financial assistance in the form of bank loans. Educated unemployed from lower income families in rural and urban areas can get financial help to set up any kind of enterprise that generates employment. Under PMRY, SJSRY mainly aims at creating employment opportunities in urban areas. Now since 1990s, this approach has been changed. The government provides partial financial assistance to self-help groups that is SHG popularly known as, which are the nodal agencies for self-employment activities. Swarn Jayanti Gram Swarojgar Yojana is one such program. This has now been restructured as National Rural Livelihood Mission known as NRLM. A similar program called National Urban Livelihoods Mission has also been put up in place for urban poor. Now let us see in August 2005, a rights based approach was initiated to provide employment. The parliament passed a new act to provide guaranteed wage employment to every rural household whose adult volunteer to do unskilled manual work. So, for a minimum of 100 days in a year, the act is known as Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Under this act, all those among the poor who are ready to work at the minimum wages can report for work in areas where this program is implemented. It was found in 2013 and 14, nearly 5 crore households got employment opportunities under this law. The third approach address the poverty is to provide minimum basic amenities to the people. India was among the pioneers in the world to envisage that through public expenditure on social consumption needs that is provision of food grains at subsidized rates, education, health, water supply and sanitation. Poverty can be addressed. The fifth five year plan states that even with expanded employment opportunities, the poor will not be able to buy for themselves all the essential goods and services. They have to be supplemented up to at least certain minimum standards by social consumption and investment in the form of essential food grains, education, health, nutrition, drinking water, housing, communications and electricity. These three major programs that aim at improving the food and nutritional status of the poor are public distribution systems, integrated child development schemes and midday meal scheme, Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Gramodhya Yojana, Valmiki Ambedkar Avas Yojana etc. or also attempts in developing infrastructure and housing conditions for the poor. The government also has a variety of other social security programs to help a few specific groups from 